Hey gang and welcome to your very first Super Bass tutorial. So then my friends, first things first, what is Super Bass? Well, Super Bass is what's known as a backend as a service, meaning that it provides a whole host of different backend services such as a database, cloud functions, authentication and storage. And then we can just connect to those backend services from our front end applications. So that all the heavy lifting on the back end is kind of taken care of by Superbase. Now, if you've ever used Firebase before, then it's quite similar to how that works. And in fact, Superbase markets itself as a Firebase alternative, but there are a few major differences between the two services. The first one is that Superbase uses a SQL database called Postgres. So it deals in rows and columns, not documents like a NoSQL database, such as the one used by Firebase would. And the functions that the Superbase client library provides us with to interact with the database reflects SQL terminology. So if you've used SQL before, then those function names are gonna sit very nicely with you. If you've not, then don't worry, they're still very self-explanatory. The second big difference between Superbase and Firebase is that Superbase only uses open source technologies and it just connects them all together to provide a full backend experience, if you like. So because it's all open source, we could just take this package and dive into the code, deploy it where we want and basically have full autonomy. But Firebase isn't open source, so we don't get that option with that service. And instead, we're experiencing something called vendor lock-in. So, Superbase has that extra advantage over Firebase if you need that extra control. Now, I don't want to turn this into a video about Superbase versus Firebase and compare the two too much. Um, and I don't want to discuss which one's better than the other because honestly, I think both of them are really good and they both have their own places in web dev. It's down to you as a developer, which one you prefer working with and which one works better with your application. And it might be that you don't want to work with any of these and you prefer working with other tools instead. It's all very dependent on what's best for you and your projects. So in this series, we'll be diving into how Superbase works and how to connect to it from a front-end application. In particular, we'll be looking at the database and building a simple CRUD application that interacts with that database so that users can create, read, update, and delete data to and from it. And then in the future, I will be making more advanced courses about how to use other features such as authentication and functions. So this series is very much your introduction to Superbase and how to get up and running with a database. So for the front end in this course, I'll be using React, but you don't really need to know much about React to follow along with the Superbase stuff. So if you're not a React developer and you just wanna learn about Superbase, then you can still work through this series and all of the Superbase code, you can pretty much just carbon copy into whatever front end that you're using. So definitely don't feel like you need to know about React to carry on and learn about Superbase. It's gonna be a relatively short course and it's gonna teach you all the basics pretty quickly so you can pick it up and run with it no matter what front-end libraries you're using. And in the end, we'll end up with a simple project like this, Super Smoothies. And this is reading data from the Superbase database right here to output all these individual smoothies. And then we can edit those smoothies if we wanted to, and we'll see that update right after we've made it. We can also delete smoothies by clicking the trash icon and we can add new smoothies by using this form right here as well. So this is the project that we're going to be building throughout this playlist and it's going to teach you all the fundamentals that you'll need to make a simple CRUD application. Now to begin with, to save us boilerplating a whole new React site and making components for all of the different pages, I've already prepped a starter React project and you can find it on the course files repo for this series. The link to this page is going to be down below the video. Now to get the starter project, make sure you select the starter project branch from the branch drop down then hit the green code button and download a zip folder of the project incidentally if you want to access the course files for any lesson in this series then all you need to do is select that particular lesson from the branch drop down over here and then hit the green code button again to download a zip folder of that lesson so once you do download a zip folder, whether it be the starter project or a different lesson, you'll need to install all the project dependencies for it to work using npm install. So let's do that now for the starter project we just downloaded. 
So I've unzipped that project folder and I've renamed it to Super Smoothies as well. So what I'm gonna do is right click that and open it up with VS Code. And then this is our starter project right here. The first thing we wanna do though, is we wanna install all the project dependencies listed in package.json. So let's open up a terminal, new terminal. And then to do this, we say npm install. And you need to make sure you have Node.js installed on your computer already in order to do this, because when Node is installed, NPM comes along for the ride as well. So let's do NPM install to install all those dependencies. Okay, so now those dependencies are all installed, what I'd like to do is quickly run through the different files and folders in this starter project just to give you a quick bird's eye view of what's going on and then we can preview it in a browser. So like all React projects, we have our public folder and a source folder. Now the public folder has inside it the index.html file. This is where eventually all the React component content is dumped. And also in here, we have a link to the Google Fonts library because we're gonna use a Google Font later. Now, that's the only thing we need to worry about inside the public folder. Inside the source, we have a folder called pages and these are all the different page components. I'll come to those in a second. We also have the root component app.js and inside that we import these things from React Router DOM because we're using the React Router so we can have different pages. So we import the browser router which wraps the entire application. It pretty much needs to do that so that we can use the different components from React Router DOM inside the application because we can't use these outside of the browser router. Inside that we have a nav with an H1 and then a couple of links using the link component to the different pages. So a link to the home page and a link to forward slash create. And this link right here is going to forward slash. And when we go to forward slash, we are gonna render, if we take a look down here, this route, which is the home component. When we go to forward slash create, we render the create component as the page. And when we go to forward slash ID, where this is a wrap parameter, so it could change, it could be one, two, three, or 357, whatever the ID is, we're gonna render this component right here, the update page, all right? So they're all our routes, we have links in the navbar as well. Now then, let me show you these pages. So the home page itself is just a div with the class name of page. All of the different pages are gonna have this class so they can be styled the same way. And also an individual one, this one's called home. And down here we just have an H2. So that's the template, dead simple for the home page. And the other pages are pretty much the same to begin with. We have page and create for the classes, H2 that says create for the content, and then update, very similar, okay? So they're the different pages, pretty blank to begin with, but we have all those set up with the different routes now so that it's all working. All right, we also have the index.js uh, file which kickstarts the application. And inside here, we import the index.css file. So that's this thing right here. And we have some very basic styles for the application. First of all, we import a Google font and that font is Poppins. And then down here, we declare some CSS variables, the primary color and the secondary color. We reset the margin on H1, H2, and H3 to set it to zero. We have some styles for the body to strip out the margin, give it a text color, font family, and a background color. For the nav, we give it the background color of the primary color up here, this variable, and then give it some padding and text align to the center. Every anchor tag inside that is colored very light gray, a bit of margin and display inline blocks, so they sit next to each other, and then the H1 is white. The page classes, which remember is for every page, we give a max width of 1200 pixels and then 20 pixels top and bottom for the margin auto left and right and a padding of 20 pixels as well all the way around. So that's a brief tour of the starter project. Dead, dead simple. What I'd like to do now is preview this in a browser. So to do that, we're gonna type npm start. When we do that, React is gonna spin up a local dev server so that we can preview this on local host. So now if you go to this address in the browser, you should be able to see this project. And here it is. Okay, so we have the home page, and you can see the home page content right here. Also up in the nav, we have these links. If we click on that, it doesn't change because we're already on the home page. I can go to this link right here, and it should go to forward slash create, which it does, and we see create over here. And if we go to something else like one, two, three, remember that was the forward slash ID parameter. And if we hit enter, we should go to the update page, which we do. Okay, awesome, so this is all working. So that's the starter project up and running. Next, I'm gonna show you how to create a new Superbase project and connect to that from our front end. 
by the way if you want to watch this entire course now without youtube adverts you can do it's all up on the net ninja website netninja.dev you can buy the course for two dollars to get instant access to all of it or you can sign up to net ninja pro and get instant access to all of my courses without adverts as well as premium courses not found on youtube including my udemy ones that's nine dollars a month and you can get your first month half price when you use this promo code right here so i'm going to leave this link down below in the video description for you to sign up and i really hope you enjoy this series and please do not forget to share subscribe and like the videos that really helps a lot and i'm going to see you in the very next lesson